it's just simple things like you can hear someone walking behind you if you're getting into a lift and if you give a shit you, you can wait you can hear someone coming behind you if you're opening the door there are all sorts of things um that allow me ease in life because to me with all these perspectives happening at once they're basically thought experiments they're okay this is one perspective what's it like over here what's it like over here what happens if i do this what happens if i do that blah, 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 blah. millions of, of uh, um, thought experiments probably several million a day and once you ask that many questions of your perception and it's uh, somewhat glib um but there's a film that was out recently called everything every everything everywhere all at once and i watched it and it's just brilliant and basically the, one of the characters in there says nothing matters because we are so oh about our existence in 100 years so i've not got children my brother's not got children 100 years from now no one's going to know us no one's going to remember us not no one's going to care it, it simply doesn't matter but you have to have been dead a few times in constant pain have to have to problem solve make it your business to problem solve to try and help people um and then running all these mental experiments and you and you get to that realization that ultimately perception is the person's reality and most people's perceptions are limited to one perspective it took me 18 months of trying to shut down my other perspectives to even get a handle on that truth and once i understood that truth i knew so all of my life up until that point people have gone jonathan jonathan this is the situation and then i go and do it and it just isn't at all even slightly um and they would go to me uh, and i go but 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 because my multiple perspectives go into problem solving mode and i thought but what about this was something they were able to conceive of and participate in but what I found over time, so Stephen Covey has a book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Right at the end of that book, there's a thing about listening. In sales, you're always probing and questioning. So that's my normal communication style. In there, it says, listen compassionately, respond emotionally. And there's actually a Simpsons scene that I've clipped with exactly that being played out so person goes Jonathan you go wow that that sounds really really quite quite annoying I go, yeah, yeah 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 and that's all you do that's all they want they just want to be heard and that's probably in my experience 85 to 90 percent of all people uh, thanks for that great insight on dyslexia and I purposely asked you the impact uh, I, I purposely ask you that because uh, my son is dyslexic and I wanted to, to hear your perspective. Um, tell me about your second song, please. Yes, second song. So um, when I had broke this wrist, I was in a hospital and I was listening to Linkin Park, um, who are a great band, and they, they got me through uh, some, some difficult times. Again, this is from my funeral. So... Um, but I have now, so when I came out and I paid for my funeral and wrote my eulogy, I was pretty angry. It's like, you know, uh, hashtag FFS. Um, uh, and uh, so, uh, right, so uh, it was, right, right, so, okay. It used to be Numb and a song called In The End. Chester, the lead singer of Linkin Park, committed him, uh, committed suicide a t couple of years ago. He had been severely abused in childhood. And when you listen to the songs back, you can hear him. You can hear his pain. And there's a song called A Million Stars. And it's beautiful. And the video with it is them as a young band. They're 